Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'm going to show you just how easy it is to create a JSF application using Oracle JDeveloper. You can download JDeveloper from Oracle's website and it's really easy to work with. What I like about it is I don't have to mess around with, with any environment variables. What we're going to do here is just create a new application and we'll call this my JSF App 1 and we'll make this a generic application and then later add the necessary libraries. So we'll just hit finish right here, kill off this window, and you'll see that we have an empty project. If I right click on my project and say new JSF, I can create a new JSF page right here. I'm going to call my page page one. Now one thing to be aware of if I say blank page, it's just going to give us the necessary JSF and HTML libraries. If I say quick start layout, it's going to include Oracle ADF libraries, and that might not be what you want. So let's just stick with blank page. Okay, so here's our page right here. Just to demonstrate or just to prove that we are where we are uh, during runtime, we're going to just slap an output text on there and just say page one. Of course, in the real world, you'd want to make this a little bit prettier, but this is just showing the functionality here. Now we're going to create another web page. We'll call it page two. Okay, and we're going to put an output text right there. Whoops, I accidentally added two. There we go. Okay, so there we have our two pages. Now you'll see that when we created our JSF page, it automatically created the WebXML file and the Faces config file for us in the proper location. The Faces config file contains all the necessary XML. You'll see that this is an XML document. That includes navigation, among other things. So what we're going to do, instead of dragging a JSF page right here, we're going to drag it from over here since those pages already exist and we're going to define how to get from page one to page two. We do that through a JSF navigation case. So from here to here, and we'll say here, go to two. That is the string outcome. So if we click on a, on a button, or some kind of command item on page one, and if the string outcome is go to two, then it will navigate to page two. Let's do the same sort of thing, going from page two to page one. Now we need to have on our page one some kind of mechanism, some kind of button or link to get to page two. So what we can do is go up here, here's our command button, let's just drag it onto this page and we'll make the text say go to page two. Okay, here's our button here. We want to make sure that the action, you'll see here it automatically shows up because it looked at that faces config file. Let's go to our other page. Let's drag on a command button. We'll make this say, go to page one. We'll make this action go there. And now we can test our page. So let's right click on our page one and run it. Okay, here's our page one. Now we're at page two, and now we're at page one again, so everything's working just fine. Now if you needed to have any helper Java beans, they would go under application sources if you're working with, you know, the view layer. Remember, JSF uses model view controller architecture, so if you needed to have any kind of business logic, it would be in a separate project for the model. In other words, you would go file new, you would create a new, where are our projects? Right here. And you could just say generic project right up here. Maybe you could call this model and then hit finish. Okay, and so if this project down here uses anything from the model, you need to ensure that the dependencies are there. So you would just right click, go to project properties, go to dependencies, and then you could select this model right here. 
Okay. Now, of course, there's nothing in there, so uh, this OK is grayed out. But if you had anything in there, uh, it would show up. Well, I hope this video tutorial has been really useful for you. Please visit us at our website at www.fireboxtraining.com.